Welcome to Israeli Adventures, the podcast that unveils the opulence and charm of the Holy Land. This is Benny Levine's podcast, your host and the proud owner of Luxury Experiential Travel. Join me as we explore the finest destinations and experiences that Israel has to offer. Get ready to indulge in the ultimate luxury escape. Hello and welcome to another episode of Israeli Adventures. I'm here with Benny Levine. Hey, Benny. Shalom, shalom. How shalom, are you? Shalom, shalom. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm great. Having a good day, especially in the air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Today we, we are recording this episode at, at the summer, the Israeli summer, which is uh, very hot. And this day was particularly uh, very hot. So, yeah, it's yeah. a heat wave that is coming. And yeah. uh, it's unusual heat wave that will be staying with us for a few days. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah and then and, uh, let's uh, first of all introduce you. You are the founder of Let Travel and the co-founder of Go My Ever and Black Flamingo. And with this, the, the reason we're talking so much about the weather is because we're going to talk about the seasons of Israel. We're going to talk uh, what you should know as travelers in Israel uh, regarding every season you're coming in, whether, whether you're coming in the winter, in the summer, in the autumn or uh, in the spring. We're going to talk about what to wear, where to go and what to do in every season. So uh, let's let's talk a little bit about the differences because I think that for people that never been in Israel before, they think that it's always a heat wave in Israel. It's always very very hot. Is it true, Benny? So uh, no, completely not. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges for people that coming from abroad is really to understand uh, what are the seasons and wh- when to come. What how the seasons affecting the type of tour that I'm gonna do in Israel. Uh, so it's definitely a good idea to speak about the seasons. We are count to be like free seasons uh, climate uh, when we don't have winter. So because winter in many people's mind is like snow and snowstorms, a lot of rain. And that's something we don't have here. So we're basically dividing the Israeli weather into three different categories. We're taking the summer, that it's very hot, or and that's pr- probably starting around June, July and August, uh, maybe even half of September. Then we have the sides of this season, or basically the shoulders of this season. So we have the autumn and the spring that are both have their own magic and their own uh, like really a specialty and uh, their own unique things that are happening during those two two seasons. But uh, they are, uh, we know that they are less hot. The weather is very reliable. It is the, during the day, it's a nice temperature, even for water activities. And during the morning, and the afternoons is a little bit colder, especially when you go high in altitude like Jerusalem or the Golan Heights or the Upper Galilee or even in the desert in Mitzperamon. So that's like the center, like those are the two seasons, the shoulder seasons. Uh, we, each one of them is unique and we will talk a little bit deeper later. And we have the winter. So, you know, <laughs> winter in Israel. Uh, so even statistically, Jerusalem have the same amount of rain like London. Did you know about it? Really? Wow. Yeah. It, it doesn't feel that way. No. Being in so, London, it's always, you know, <laughs> feels so gloomy and, and, and gray. So, yeah, yeah Jerusalem so, doesn't feel that so way. So that, that's the thing is that yeah. the amount of millimeters of rain or inches of rain that we have every year is the same like in London. The difference is that in London, as, as an example, have over 200 rainy days a year. So it's like drizzling, la, 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 la. And in Israel, it's like Jerusalem, for example, it's concentrated in 24 days a year. So the rain is not like la la la, it's like ah, yeah. I'm raining and it's gonna come, come for like two, three hours and then disappear and then we have strong winds and then it will come again. So even the most rainy months like December and January, we have only six, seven days of rain in the month average. And if you go down to the south, you reduce that to one one and a half days in the Negev desert. So if you cross Beersheba south, that's it. You have one or maybe one and a half days. If and, and if you're lucky, you have more. But 
because that's create a lot of interesting opportunities when you're traveling, especially if you're you're open minded for changes and you're an adventure seeker. One of the things that are phenomenal to see it's flash floods that are happening in the Negev. Yeah. So it's not something to do on your own. Interesting to see, but uh, very dangerous. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to go with somebody that know where to watch it from. So we will not have any, any danger in it because it is really predictable for somebody that knows. So we actually, I'm part of a group called themselves the Flesh Flood Hunters. Nice. It's like, uh, you know, uh, we have a group on Facebook and we are, when, when there is a season, we can look on the satellite pictures to see where the rain comes, knowing the topography will know where the flesh flood will be. So like last, last year, we had a big trip that we had this rain and we went to see it's like unbelievable the waterfalls that it it's just like you you're standing there and the nature is magical it's showing its power and its beauty and it was one thing that with all the changes we skipped a lot of the planned itinerary and uh, we found ourselves you know watching nature power and people were writing later on in the reviews that this was one of those special moments that they felt that they saw something unbelievable, something unique. Yeah, for sure. To see the nature, you know, just to see a, a plain desert and all of a sudden in a matter of seconds, it's unbelievable. It's not minutes. It's in seconds. It goes full full with water and and the, all the creeks and the, the rivers uh, just f following up. Um, there is a question that a lot of uh, people that come and want to travel in Israel ask themselves is what is the best season? to travel Israel. So let me just put it like aside because the answer for that is more, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's not just, oh, you just come in the spring and it will be the most beautiful season. So let's just understand a little bit the difference of the difference, what to expect in the different seasons and what I recommend as a travel plan for those seasons. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with my most recommended season, and those are the shoulder seasons. So it can be spring and autumn because the weather is perfect. You know, during the day you get to 80 degrees, like 25, 26, the crystal sky is blue sky, nice sun of the spring or the autumn. And it's, it's the best time to come. So the, the only thing you need to do is to, and it's perfect for everyone. So no matter who you're coming with, if it's a group of friends, if it's like people on their pension and like the older generation that is coming and want a more comfortable weather, or if you come with kids. So during the day, you literally can do anything and it's, it's warm. But every morning, and that's something that is important to remember when you come to travel during the shoulder seasons is make sure that you pack like an onion so <laughs> you know layers yeah so means i don't want a big puffy jacket to wear on to keep me warm i want a lot of very tight Thin, thin, thin layers, layers yeah. yeah because that's really giving you in the morning you wake up you feel it's chilly it's like oh it's chilly yeah. outside so you have that layers out but by 9 30 10 o'clock when the sun rising and the temperatures are rising then you suddenly find yourself like oh it's warm it's hot and this crystal clear sky that i was mentioning is also adding to it so you're taking off the layers and you have a middle of the day that you even can use in uh, uh, to go into the bodies of water. So if you come with kids, for example, families that are coming with kids, this is the most comfortable time to come if you don't if you suffer from heat. And it's more reliable weather than if you're coming in the winter. So I think that's the perfect season with uh, you know taking spring. As an example, I think the beauty of the spring is unique. You have a lot of water that came through the winter and suddenly everything is blooming. Like everywhere you go, you go up to the Golan and you see fields of blue flowers and yellow flowers and green flowers. I don't know if there's green flowers, but literally every color you can imagine, you have 
everything is blooming. The nature is in its power. On those season, in this season, we have the birds migration that is also very unique and, and interesting. We have between half a billion to uh, like 750 million birds flying above Israel two times a year. So during the spring, they flying from Africa where they were wintering. And that's Israel is geographically is the only land passage. So most of the birds, they use hot air to fly the big birds. So we see them turning around, thermaling and flying on the forces of nature, the small birds flying at night and they have to stop along the way. So they always will fly above a land so they can rest and gain weight because the bird that migrating can lose up to 60 or 70 percent of their body weight and they can gain the same 70 percent above their body weight in just five six days so those stops are important so this is something worse to see when you are you know traveling in the spring uh, in the autumn uh, compared to the spring, the temperatures are pretty much the same. You know, mornings and afternoons are chilly. So the same idea of onion is uh, really good. The main difference is, I think, is the bodies of water. So like uh, Mediterranean Sea, Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea, even the Red Sea that is stayed, the temperature of the water is all year round the same. It's the best time to come enjoy the good weather, but the water is still warm from the summer. So if you come like in the spring, some of the water bodies are going to be oh, very cold. Cold. Yeah, yeah. Like if you go to the Sea of Galilee, it's cold. A lot of the creeks uh, get uh, water in the in the north from the Hermon. So mm -hmm. the water are icy. They are yeah. super cold. So yeah, it's yeah. very, very chilly to go it inside. Is, it is melting ice that are coming into the Jordan yeah. River, going into the Sea of Galilee. So I would say if you have kids that are, you know, under the age of 10, because usually statistically under the age of 10, uh, kids are more sensi sensitive to cold temperature. So I would say come in the autumn, that's a better time. If it's the springtime, it is uh, definitely a time that uh, the bodies of water are more cold and younger kids will be more sensitive to that. Great. So let's talk a little bit about some uh, attractions to do, uh, whether if it's in the autumn or in the spring. Let's let's address the winter and the summer later. So let's start from okay. there. So uh, look, for me, is I think spring and autumn because of that shoulders. So if we take Israel and we divide it into four areas that most of the people would love to visit. One of them is Tel Aviv and the coastline. Okay, like along Tel Aviv, like Caesarea, Haifa, Akko, even down south to Ashkelon, all of this area. Uh, we have an area of Jerusalem and the Jerusalem hills, mountains. We have the south, the Negev Desert. So if you want to explore the desert, it is this area and that's pretty much 55% of the country. Okay, we've no like it's 56, but depends how you count. And then you have the north, the Galilee and the Golan. So if you're coming on those shoulder time, you literally can visit everywhere. We usually build our trips, you know, with experience of about 2000 tours that we created, built. So usually during the spring and the autumn, we can choose depends on where the people coming from. So if I have guests from Arizona that know desert better, they want to see the more greenish area of Israel, we'll go up to the Golan and enjoy really the blooming of the, the, blooming of, uh, the flowers, the wildflowers during the spring, or we'll enjoy the bodies of water and the rivers that we still can swim in and do different uh, hiking, repelling, um, um, even kind of like canoeing on the Jordan River, it's a possibility. Raft building activities that are great. Uh, don't expect wh white water rafting in no, Israel. That's no, that's not the place. <laughs> like <laughs> when you go on the Jordan River, it's like a lazy river. Uh, if we have water, it's a good thing. So yeah, let's yeah. start from that. But uh, yeah. so not not every year we have a good year. Lately we're very very lucky, but there are unique things to do, like on those shoulders 
York Times, and they are included. If I, if I leave Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, that are pretty much not changing in the seasons yeah. of the things you can do. But here are several interesting things to do in each region on those shoulder shoulder seasons. Uh, seasons. So if we're taking the adventure side, side of it, so I would recommend in the north, Black Canyon. Black Canyon is the only real canyoning in Israel. It is a closed national park that have 50 permits a day. So it is worth to book ahead of time. Um, you need a uh, professional guides with rope, but you basically leaving early in the morning, seven in the morning, you're getting into a canyon that is literally closed up to 50 people a day. And you repel three waterfalls into water pools that you need to swim. And it's just phenomenal. And the best time to do it is like spring, summer, in this case, and autumn. All the three seasons are phenomenal. Another thing you can do in the north on that uh, adventure side is something called Via Ferrata. Via Ferrata is something you hear usually from Europe, is the Iron Ways. It's originated to move forces through the Alps. So instead of having ropes, you have like cables, metal cables on the cliffs, and people go with a harness with two clips, and they pass. And it's it's a really cool feeling of being on one side on the very end or edge of the cliff, but on the other hand, you're very secure, and you're walking on those little ledges on the cliff, and sometimes men ma made like uh, holders and leathers or like uh, pieces of wood, little bridges. And we have now free via ferratas like this in Israel. Two of them are in the north, in the Galilee. One is in Manara Cliff. One is in a secret location in the western side of the Galilee. And we just have a new one opened literally in 2023 on Masada. Nobody knows about it because it was not officially, uh, uh, you know, like not officially announced announced yet. But we already had a few test runs there and it's phenomenal and beautiful way. It's called the Masada Challenge. So if that's the adventure part, one other thing that is worth to do on these shoulder times is uh, go to see the wildflowers. Uh, you know, and and the blooming because it's really unique. Like you sometimes arrive to a place that you can't imagine. As far as the eye sees, you see a red carpets of wild flowers, and it's just so beautiful. Uh, some people or the young generation tell me that's Benny. This is so Instagrammy, and I'm like. Oh my God, you're so right. You know, it's like everywhere you see, it's like green with carpets of colors and just being in the nature. So this season is great for, um, you know, being outside, hiking, um, visiting wineries that you start to see the, the grapes uh, coming back to life after their sleep over the winter. Uh, so this is really, really good. The temperature is great. So all the other attractions are good. Desert blooming also. Some of the years we have a desert blooming that is hard to believe that you're in the desert because it goes for two, three weeks during March usually. And that's also a great time to visit in the desert. Um, one of the things that are very interesting if you're choosing the southern part of Israel is to follow where we had the flash floods. We started this conversation because those flash floods fills up the canyons and like secret pools all around the Negev, the Arava Valley, the Judean Desert. So it's created a unique opportunity to see like the nature with clean water and pools that you can literally swim, jump in, hike through, or be inside them. And it's just, you know, like unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, there's unbelievable. a lot of secret yeah. locations around the, the way uh, on the road to Elat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, on, on the desert. So there is a lot of secret locations that you find sometimes find. And then you find this huge pool, maybe even a, a depth pool, you know, like two meter, three meter, four meter mm -hmm. uh, uh, depth. Yeah. 
So it, it, it's unbelievable to see something like <laughs> Listen, that in the desert. Uh, uh, this year we've been lucky because we had the last, last flash flood was in, in the beginning of June. Usually not happening. So we have groups now, today now we're in July. We have groups that were swimming in those pools a month and a half later with the heat, the water are fresh. Yeah. So coming and to the water in the desert and cold, yeah, yeah, like refreshing. Yeah. By the way, 15 minutes after you're in the water, you forget about it <laughs> yeah. when it's in the summer. But it's a good 15 minutes, But though. it's a good 15 <laughs> yeah, minutes, for sure. definitely. For sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the temperatures in every season because we talked a little bit about uh, the shoulders. Let's talk about how, how hot is the summer and how cold and rainy is the winter. Okay, so... Like I want to take it to like average temperatures, but also what are the risks that we have? Okay, so the averages during the winter, if we take an average temperature in Israel during the winter, we are talking at night about eight degrees Celsius. So pretty much around 40 in there for the beginning of the 40s in Fahrenheit and it climbs up even in the winter to 20 degrees if it's a sunny nice day you can have 20 degrees 20 degrees is in its 70s and if you go to the Dead Sea you can have a day that is like a perfect 80 degrees you like are yeah. we are in the winter exactly so those are the winter temperatures Rainy days, depends where, but we said six to seven days north to Beersheba, we have six to seven days, and this is the risk. So if it's a group of adults, no problem, you can change, you can go indoors, you can adjust the itinerary and go inside. If it's with kids, it is the season that all the kids, like in the States, you have uh, all ages of kids have a winter break pretty much in the same two weeks. So it is the busiest season in Israel. This is also a uh, Christian holidays. So we have, uh, you know, uh, Christmas and New Year and everybody are excited. So holidays are all over the world. So we have usually during that time about 350 to 450 Christian tourists that just come for Christmas to Israel. Add to that all the families that have different kids in different, uh, you know, different educational systems from like kindergarten to university. They all have the same time holiday. So it is a season when you come with kids is the most risky. You just need to know it because it's not going to be most of the chances that you're not going to have any rainy days. But if you have a rainy day, you don't want to be outside like Part of what I believe need to be when you're traveling with kids, you do a little activity in the morning that is educational. And then afternoon is fun, hands-on, outdoors, anything that make, depends on the family, what make the kids happy. And if you have a rain, you can't do it. So I always recommend during the winter, the triangle need to be Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. There are more things to do indoors and then go south. To the negative desert like spend your travel if you're already coming in the winter and you don't have other choice go to the negative the chance there are only one and a half days and if you have that one and a half day i told you it's what are you going to flood. see that's going to be like amazing probably a flash flood and that's like this is please give it to me every day because every time we have groups like this that's what we send them to do. We bring an expert on flash flood and we take them to see something that, you know, a small amount of people ever saw in their life, including Israelis. So that's the winter. Uh, we talked about enough, of, I think, about the shoulder seasons. Um, and, but the temperatures, again, average temperatures, you take the colder, the evening temperatures are climbing up already to the 50s. But still in the morning, it can be chilly, sometimes wind come into play those are the two we have two weather systems in israel one is the cypress we we call it the cypress uh, weather system and one of them is the red sea the red sea like in a lot it's the half arabian island weather system so it's like a hot air and the cold air that are clashing they are trying to see who have more power so that's also the seasons that you can have heat waves not like in the summer, but 
you suddenly can have a super sunny and hot day that your body is not used to yet. You're like, oh, what's going on? But that's something that is can happen during those passing seasons. And the summer, so the summer, the opposite to the winter, we try not to go to the south. We try not to go to the desert. If you go to the desert, I have one tip, and that's just be local, be a person of the desert. What does it mean? If you look on all the Bedouins, Bedouins, the name Bedouins are coming from the Arabic word Badaya, means desert. The people of the desert, they are smart, waking up early with the sun, active for one or two or three hours. When it's hot, you come back to the hotel, you find a nice pool, make sure you have a pool during the summer in your hotel or wherever you stay and just wait for the afternoon and go out again in the afternoon. That's the only way to travel in the south. If people know it, they can go, especially to Mitzperamon, that the altitude is very high, so all the mornings are comfortable, and the afternoons are also very, very comfortable to a level that you might need a jacket even during the summer. But that being said, when I try to build summer tours, like, again, I love Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, and then I love to go to the north, because the north have a lot of outdoor activities, a lot of bodies of water. You know, it's not matter if it's an adult group that we just had. So we went to a winery, we picked up wine, we drink a glass or two, we picked up a cheese from the cheese farm nearby, and we're like, shall we go back to the hotel or to like a secret spot with a spring? Like, of course, secret spot with a spring. So we brought a few bottles. The spring is so cold that you put in the white wine and the rosé wine and you cut the cheese and suddenly you have a beautiful afternoon. Or if it's with kids, the same thing. You just, if it's too warm, you stop for in a body of water and you feel completely fresh. So you can, on one hand, have educational, like, program that will study the history, the connection, the borders, geopolitics, the different type of people we have here. You know, the North is full with Druze, Cherkessians, Israeli Christian Arabs, Israeli Muslim Arabs. Um, we have Kibbutznikim. What is Kibbutz? What is Moshav? All of that you can do during the summer up in the North. So I think summer vacation is great. People coming and if you can come in June, July, if you can come in August, but again, prepare that in August, it's going to be hotter and we will need to like amplify the time that we give during the middle of the day for air conditioning spaces when you plan it. And definitely one thing to pack during the summer is a water shoes and a swimming suit. This is two things that like even like hiking, like little hiking towels that are quick dry. This is like a kit that need to be with every person literally on every day touring Israel. Because if it's too hot, there is enough water to jump in uh, during this season. Yeah, for sure. And if it's in the hotel or it's in the north or it's in the south, there is a, a body of water everywhere you go. And, and we, we must have them because it's uh, very hot. So, so uh, it's a very good thing to do. So uh, a moment before we wrap up, uh, everyone uh, who listens to us and want to plan his travel to Israel, you have a special gift for him, right? So I, we actually have like a little PowerPoint or like a PDF that summarizing the different seasons and what to put attention on. So I think we will put a downloading uh, yeah, in the link description, uh, whether yeah. you watch it on YouTube or on, on different uh, Yeah, no matter. Uh, it's like really worth to look. Those are the key points, very summarized, like six, seven pages with bullet points, easy to remember Great. Uh, what you can do in each season. Terrific. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shalom, shalom. Thanks for tuning in to Israeli Adventures. I hope you had a blast exploring the luxury vacation scene here in Israel. Stay adventurous, keep embracing the fun, and let your wanderlust lead you to extraordinary experiences. See you next time for more fantastic escapades, safe travels, and endless joy to all our awesome listeners from Benny Levine.